You are listening to the Smuggler's Galaxy podcast, my favorite podcast to listen to on long flights across the galaxy. This is the way. We want it, men. Welcome to episode 168 of the Smuggler's Galaxy podcast. You know, finally, with Jason having all these problems, I was able to look up the right number and uh, get, you know, they didn't have to confer with him about it. But uh, yeah, it, it always seems like five out of 10 times we always have issues with computers this morning. Yeah. Everything's yeah. fine. But you're here now, Jason. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> exhausting. Oh, from yesterday or just getting the computer together? Getting the computer together. That's All interesting. Right. All right. Now I got this going. Okay. Now come on this part of the computer load. <laughs> right, that's loading. Now the microphone's not working. Well, you know, one good thing about it being a Mac is if it was a PC, it's, it would have it stopped working like five years ago. Exactly. Exactly. But. So, yeah. How how you doing this morning? It's been a long time no see. Yeah, yeah. Yesterday, I clocked 19 and a half hours on on the day. I was up at four and I didn't go to bed till 1130. Oh, dude, I hadn't even checked my steps to see what we stepped yesterday. But oh, I didn't either. It was a lot. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, we went to uh, Retro Toy Con yesterday in Charlotte, Greensville, North Carolina. So it was like a three hour one way trip. Yeah, we uh, you you had more of an adventure than I did, and I only heard like bits and pieces of it when you were telling Mandy as I was hurrying to get ready because you're you're definitely you were an on time person, if not a little early. So you're like me. I like being on time and I was running a little late. I look at the clock or, you know, you're you're running around doing final things. And I look at the clock and it's like six fifty eight. And I'm like, Jason will be here any minute. And one minute later, you're texting me going, I'm here. I'm here. Yep. (laughs) Some hell or high water. I'm on time. Yeah. (laughs) So, uh, yeah. So I heard you. So what happened with your day? Why were you up at like 4 a.m. yesterday? Uh, My (laughs) wife was flying to Tampa to visit some friends Friday night. And she gets to the airport and there was a lot going on Friday. She was trying to finish up schoolwork. Uh, she was trying to just get ready to go when she hadn't packed at all. And she gets to the airport. I drop her off, say goodbye. And I start driving away and I see the dreaded phone call from her. There's no reason I should hear from her until Tuesday when I have to pick her up. I was like, what's up? And she forgot her driver's license. She took her credit card and her insurance card. We live an hour away from the airport. So even if I booked it and, and sped through traffic and, you know, cared about family and was Vin Diesel. I would not have made it back to the airport in time. And it's all about uh, family. It's all about family. Um, I would not have made it back to the airport in time. So we on the drive home, she booked a ticket for 7 a.m. on Saturday morning. But it is Thanksgiving weekend, and that's always fun to go through Atlanta Airport on Thanksgiving weekend. So I had to drop her off at five, which means that to get to the airport on time, I had to be up at four. However, I mean, honestly, I was tossing and turning at 3.30 when she got up, so I'm not complaining. I'm just telling you. Right. No, we were, we wanted to know, man. You yeah, know? and and then I got home around, what, 5, 5.30? It was about uh-huh. 5.30 when I got home, and I was like, I, I, I can't take a nap for an hour. It's not going to work. If I take a nap for an hour, I'm going to be asleep for three hours. Right, and then we'd so, be calling you going, Jason. Yeah, so that's part of the reason why I was... On time is because I was up and ready to go. <laughs> the kid on just, Christmas. Yep. Just waiting to go. Uh, so. Yeah. Your wife's like my wife. My wife will pack. She's actually, I've because I'll pack like two days before or something. And my wife is like coming home and packing while we're the, 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 the same day we're leaving. Oh, that's not typically her. Oh, okay. That's part of the reason why she was kind of frazzled. Like. She's typically packed the day before and ready to go. And oh, yeah. So it was just 
we were just so busy that week and distracted with other things that we just didn't, <laughs> she didn't, uh, she wasn't ready in time. No, well, my next question is, did you take the turkeys out the freezer? Turkeys are out of the freezer. All right. I did that this morning too. So I was like, you did that last night. <laughs> We've got two 20 pounders. So they needed to start defrosting ASAP. They probably should have come out on Friday, but whatever. Yeah, I don't know. Mine's just a turkey breast, but I put it in the refrigerator, so we'll see. I'm I'm hoping. You know, I gotta figure worse comes to worse. Uh Wednesday night, we'll just set it on the counter and hope for the best. But I'm a I'm a brine guy. I like yeah. brine in my turkeys. This so, is a turkey breast, and my wife's gonna throw it in the uh, crock pot, so I don't know what we're gonna do. No, this will be a full turkey. I will need to brine it Tuesday night, and then the second turkey will get brined Wednesday night. And uh, I was telling you guys last night, I got these five gallon Harbor Freight buckets <laughs> and uh, you guys were giving me crap because there's probably chemicals in it that'll lead to cancer. It's not food safe. So I'll probably put a garbage bag down and then put the turkey and all of my stuff in there. Yeah. Well, I, Tony was the one that was giving you crap about it just because you're fun to get. We have crap about stuff. I'm sure it's true, though. Like that's <laughs> not food safe plastic necessarily. So. Right. I'll probably just find a garbage bag or something. I think all of our garbage bags are scented. Oh. I might have to pick up another bag now that I think about it. But it'll put them in a Walmart bag, dude. You'll be fine. I don't know if they'll fit into my coolers. (laughs) Oh. A Walmart bag. Yeah. (laughs) 20 (laughs) 20 pound turkey in a Walmart bag. That's not going to work. Right. And then you'll have Walmart on the side of your turkeys when people go to eat it. Yeah. Yeah. So what'd you pick up this week? Um, only thing I got cases from AFA, and then I got a Cosmic Legions uh figure from uh Retro Toycon, and I think that's all. I kind of been saving up uh for that kind of stuff for that show, so that's what I spent my money on. My wife got a bunch of Gremlin stuff, like she always does, but that's uh that that's it. How about you? So you didn't pick up much. You said you said you were saving. Were you expecting to find something? I was hoping to find something. I'm always hoping to find something at a show that makes me stop and uh, spend my money. The only thing that I saw there that I was kind of half interested in was the uh, symbiote suit Spider Man from mm-hmm. Action Powers or whatever. They, uh, it was carded, and the guy was wanting like 175, which I thought was a pretty fair deal. And uh, everybody was like, yeah, they kind of were like, yeah, it's probably top of the mark. But I thought they were about three, three fifty on a card. But that, I may be thinking that it was a, a graded piece that was going for that. Um, Secret Wars? Secret Wars. Yeah. Yeah. With the shields that have the changes on them. Because yes. I had one of I had those when I was a kid. And, or um, Well, I don't know how you I had like one of everything. I never could like st- get a whole unless the he-man and star wars is the only thing i had a lot of yeah uh you know you always had like one gi joe and one secret wars or you know you never got a whole bunch of a lot you know you got one of a lot of stuff versus a bunch of one thing yeah and um i i I didn't do it and i was i'm also scared that once i go down that rabbit hole it it's gonna be scary for me and i don't want to go down that rabbit. i don't need another rabbit hole yeah Stick to your focuses and you'll be fine. Right. It's just something that I want to, something else I want to spend money on. But uh, we, there was, you know, a lot of Cosmic Legion stuff there <laughs> so, and Mythic Legions. Uh, but I'm trying to focus on Cosmic Legions right now if I want to do something because they're space related and they're awesome figures. We kind of had different shows. You were people hunting and I was action figure hunting. So we only met up at like lunch and uh, and then the uh, room 300 mm-hmm. <laughs> toy hunt. You were you were looking for people and talking to people and hanging out, and I was looking for my action figures. Yeah, that's sort of the way that my my shows go, though. It's like I, I see people we hadn't seen in a few months, and you're hanging out more than you're looking at stuff. Um, and I've kind of come to accept that it it uh, because you know you're looking for such a small section of things that you're probably if if it it's going to come to you versus you finding it. And I've mm-hmm. learned that too, because there's a lot of stuff that's come my way that people just know that I'm into it mm-hmm. and I'll get a message on Facebook with a picture and you're interested. And I'm like, uh, uh yeah. So I, I, I've learned that, you know, patience is, is key, uh, for collecting for me nowadays. Cause I'm not, yeah. unless I'm, unless I'm spending under 50 bucks on something, it'll come to me. Yeah. 
How about you? You had a good day, man. You you were walking around with a big smile. Yeah, yeah. I uh, so this week I got the Grand Inquisitor TVC that came through from Hasbro Pulse, uh, along with that six pack Return of the Jedi with the Gamorrean Guard, Yak Face, Mon Mothma, um, Admiral Akafar, two other characters from Return of the Jedi that escape my mind right now. How does uh, that Yak Face look? I don't know. He's in a sealed box. I haven't opened the box. Oh, I'm sure he looks fine. Everything looks like a seven hundred dollar yak face. Yeah, I saw one for the at the show yesterday for seven hundred bucks, not graded. Yeah, well, that's. I mean, I'm I'm amazed they're going for that right now. Um, I last time I really looked at them, they were in the five to six hundred dollar range, and that freaked me out. So I'm um. When I when I see them going, when I see them at seven, it's just. It blows my mind because I think I paid two hundred for mine uh, in seventeen at celebration. Yeah. Um. And when I when I then I graded it and I'm like, if I since it's graded, you know, you I'd take a thousand dollars for it. Just to, I don't want to sell it, Bryce, because then I know I can buy another one. And now it's like you can't even do that. So now it'd be you know I have to ask like fifteen hundred for it. But oh, somebody! <laughs> I gotta keep going. Something happened. But uh, and yeah, I um, the prices of vintage stuff is pretty crazy, and the yak face. I want to get into it. Hold on, Jason's putting his headphones back on. So um, yeah, prices on, on vintage stuff is. I want to get after we're done with the show. I want to talk about the retro collection and all that stuff because uh, okay. we had an interesting conversation about it on the way back, and yeah. uh, I think it would make a good topic. I think it would it could fold into talking about the con. So uh sorry, my dog was barking because one of the kids is awake and so she wanted out of the room. And so I had to step away to open the door and let her go. Oh yeah, my uh, dog, man, my dog sits there and waits for me to wake up. And when he hears me stirring, he's just like, Hurf. And yeah. I gotta open up and let him in. So uh I also got, I don't remember, did I talk about this? I got a Migs Mayfield a couple of weeks ago to make, it's a six inch Black Series Migs Mayfield. I cut off a bunch of his belts because he's strapped to the to the nines with guns everywhere. Uh-huh. So I, cu- I cut off all the belts. I um, got some Milliput, which is a two-part epoxy that hardens in a couple hours. And I extended his head a little bit to be like a, Lack of a better term, it's like a brain, it's like a covered brain. Um, and I made Joss Purr, who's one of the bounty hunters in the cantina. So I finished that one up, and then I was on to my next cantina alien, which is going to be or not cantina uh character, mm-hmm. it's going to be were because I'm just tired of looking at this bar filled with aliens and not have a bartender. Oh, nice! So, so on eBay, there's a guy who makes custom heads. He sculpted them in in some sort of software, and uh, he prints them in resin. He or she, I, I shouldn't attach gender. And so he, I did order the head. The head came. I painted the head. The head looks phenomenal. Um, I, I did a good job painting it. I got like a. Fi- I even got like a five o'clock shadow on the face. So it looks really good. I just don't have a body. Uh oh. Does he yell at droids? Yes, he does, but he he yells at droids because hey, I don't have a body and we don't serve you because I can't serve you. I don't have arms. <laughs> oh, I ain't got nobody. So when I went to Retro Toy Con, I just assumed someone would have Sala from the Adventure series from Indiana Jones on sale, mm-hmm. and that'd be the one thing that I wanted because you can't really find it in stores right now. Um, Indiana Jones seems to be wrapping up. And he was part of that first wave. Sala was with the Raiders of the Lost Ark figures. And uh, yeah, I can't find him anywhere. So I was going to be like, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get Sala. So I bump into Jordan. I was like, did you get anything? I haven't picked up anything. I saw some stuff. I was like, have you seen a Sala yet? He's like, no, but I would just wait. I mean, it's Black Friday. It's going to be on sale. So I'm like, oh, he's right. I probably shouldn't buy it for twenty five dollars. There was one vendor who had it for twenty five dollars because it's probably going to go on sale and on Amazon because I'm sure they're they're going to yeah. So I'll be getting that this week. Uh, so you found it, or you're going to wait? I'm going to wait. I okay. did find it at the show for twenty five dollars, which is 
the price on Amazon, but okay, Jordan's so you're, right. All right. So you're going to wait it out. And if it doesn't yes. drop, you'll just buy it. Yes. Nice. So with that, like I had nothing that I was hunting for. So uh, Rich came with us, author of the Vintage Collection Archive Edition book. You can find that on Blue Milk uh, if you wanted to buy it. Uh, free plug. Um, <laughs> but there was one guy in the corner that was just selling loose figures. Loose Those are always point- fun to find. Yeah. Loose 3.75 figures. And he had things that he wanted. And I started going through it because I'm making all these Black Series aliens for the cantina and like i'm like oh i need to make this character i need to make this character and i'm like i should get these figures because um that way i have them and i can reference them and and make my own based on the 3.75 so i ended up buying together we bought 17 figures i think i got 12 cantina aliens (laughs) you had a bag full of stuff man yeah i have them all right here i probably can give their current name and then their 1977 probable name because <laughs> that Tom was, and the... was walrus man how, how the, yeah but the, the, we, were, we were we were at lunch or something we were talking about it and we were just like yeah the guy with the sideburns and y'all both naming him and the wolf man you'd give him and we'd pull stuff out our butt and just make stuff up and you were like oh that was this guy <laughs> yeah so i did get her check from the legacy collection which is uh uh a bosque kind of trendosian um he came from the legacy collection like i said he's tough to find so uh, he was marked 40 dollars, and i was like i'm snagging that one because like some of these legacy collection figures are the most expensive ones available so i got her check i got um the opening <clears throat> trinto duaba and ibigan which is this must be Trinto Ubab oh <laughs> Trinto Duaba. It's uh it's this guy that's kind of a skeletal character. He was, he's got a scarf draped over his head. Um he doesn't have his blaster, unfortunately. And then Ibidabagon is cut from the movie. He's that big puppet mouth guy. Uh-huh. He was cut from the original and uh deleted and deleted from the special editions. He looks like a giant worm for uh-huh. those keeping track at home. I also got maybe hey, wonder if he got cut for the same reason that the uh Dune Worm got cut. It just looks like something. Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Felt Pern Trigav Trivog was the goat guy. He looks like a loath cat, dude. Maybe. Maybe he's a loath cat, but he does have his blaster and he does come with a cup. She looks like the cup from uh, Last Crusade, mm. but so I got him. Set these up later. I also got. I hope this is not boring for the, the listeners. I got Mayo. I've already created this guy in um, uh, for the Black Series scale using a General Lando and a and a somebody sculpted the head. He's the one eyed character from the bar, and he was also re- his alien species was reused in Mandalorian season two. It was John Leguizamo's. Oh, um, yeah. character with the the uh the the boxing scene i should yeah, yeah the boxing he was like scene boss man or something the boss man. yes he was the boss man so he was essentially free because the guy was running deals and so like collectively even though her check was 20 bucks i did buy some power of the force stuff uh-huh. and so everything kind of like i bought them for like 10 bucks so everything kind of worked out to about 19 20 per figure nice so buying bulk actually worked out so i got my o Buying in bulk always works out, especially if you find somebody who's just like, I don't want to take this crap home. Yep. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce this guy. Miyum Onith. He's he's got a long horn for a nose. That's really weird looking. Yeah, but he's in the background somewhere, so they made him. <laughs> uh, I got Kit Kat Pettywhack. Give a dog a bone. Yeah, this is another one that I essentially got for free. Uh, Kiddick, Eedkak, he's the uh, praying mantis character that stands next to Obi-Wan Kenobi. I've already made my own 3D version of him, so he's he's there for Black Series. But now I also have a 3.75. I also got the Wolfman that we were talking about from lunch. Um, I'm going to speed things up. Lack, Servac, or Siv, 
Sivrak. Sorry. Yeah. That one I've seen around a lot. Maybe because he's, power- he's go ahead. He's power of the force too. So he's he's I think he's power of the force too. He's yeah. He's uh readily available. He's not expensive, and uh he was cut from the movie in the special editions. Uh-huh. George just thought he looked like a wolf and it wasn't alien enough. So he was partly he was he was replaced. Gotcha. I was gonna say he's partly replaced. No, he's completely replaced. They pulled his ass out of the movie. I got proto Cad Bane. Uh, <laughs> Cad Bane Alors, before he gets all the cool stuff. Yeah, Alors Med, Med Medak. He was part of the power of the force, the power of the Jedi line. Um, so I got him. I already created him in the the bar. So, but he was like one of the free ones. Uh, same thing with this guy. I already made him. Um, Ellis Hellot, the ghost face guy. Um, this was another one. His name is Wyoslea. He's the guy that they sell the um, land speeder to. Uh-huh. But he wasn't actually in the bar. He's He'll give you nightmares because his whole head is just covered with eyes. Oh, geez. And, and all the eyes are looking like straight up. His mouth kind of looks like it's not symmetrical. Uh-huh. So that's a little offsetting. Dude, I thought they sold that to, they didn't sell it to Jawas? No, they sold it to that guy. Okay. And then I got Bomb Vinden, who's a TBC uh, character. I, I have to figure out how to make one of these guys. I'm not sure how to do that for Black Series, but yeah, that character little... was in that same episode of Mandalorian, right? Oh, yeah, yep, yeah, you're right. Yep. Yeah. And then the last one I picked up was uh, Brainiac. Um, what's his real name? Hans Limbeck, and he's just a, a dude with a brain for a head. Nice. And I feel like this one will be easy to replicate in Black Series somehow, but now that I've got the reference, I can figure that out. Cool. And now I might as well just start a 3.75 Cantina. <laughs> Let me finish the Black Series one, and then I'll make the 3.75 one, and then I'll make a Micro Machines one, small, tiny, tiny Cantina. Right. Then, a little bitty one little bitty one and then you I'll can make co- the full size cantina there you are. take your turn your garage into a cantina who needs a garage All right so that's what i picked up sweet that's a lot but that is a lot dude you were you were pretty damn excited it was it was awesome I was, though. I was like oh yeah this one yeah i'll take this one too oh Oh, I didn't even think about this one. I'll take this one. <laughs> and then I don't know if this dude was working for the guy, but um, he, one of the other attendees saw that I picked up her check. He's like, oh, that's the one I wanted. And I'm like, no, he's going home with me now. <laughs> no, I've got him. And that's when you he's, stand up at full, you know. He's mine now. Yeah. That's when you get your deep voice going. And I'm like, yeah. yeah, he's mine. Step oh, back. Oh, 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 oh. oh. But um, as far as the show goes, um, my honest opinion is that it's a good show. Uh, Two hours is probably the limit of how far I would drive for that. If it was in Charlotte, Mm -hmm. I probably would skip it because it felt a lot like Toylanta. Yeah. Um, There's a lot of good vendors. Granted, I wasn't searching for big ticket items. There was some big ticket items there, but a lot of it just felt like broken bins. Uh, our bins full of broken items, our pieces and parts. Um, it felt like kind of the cheaper end of things. Like I felt like in the scale, there was high end stuff, but for the most part, some of that cheaper beater junk pieces stuff was a majority of the show, which I mm-hmm. just didn't feel like it was worth. Uh, like you always say, you know, one vendor makes your show and my show was made with all these cantina aliens right. that I didn't anticipate to make. But outside of that, I just didn't feel like oh, I, I need to go back. Right. Um, the main reason that we go is because uh, AFA is there and they run their case deal. And it is, I, I guess it's kind of counterproductive when you think that you're getting two cases for 30, you're basically buying a case, getting a case from AFA. Um so is it worth spending six hours in the car and then twenty dollars a ticket to get in to save buy do a case get a case? But I guess it's like the you get the adventure, you know. 
Um, you, you get to a show and you get to see people. I mean, it was great to see Tony and Skylar and Jordan and Richard. And, I totally miss Skylar. Uh, David and, and Chance and Kelly. It's good to hang out with them outside of the store because a second chance because sorry, I completely interrupted. But, no, dude, you're good. But that's part of the, the frustration with uh, second chance is you start talking to them. And someone walks in and they got to go help them. But here we had like their undivided attention because we went to lunch with them. Right. No, I, that's and, and that's what's cool about going to shows. Like, that's why I enjoy going to shows. That's why because uh, you do hang out with your friends. And uh, like I said at the beginning, you just I've learned that the stuff I'm looking for is probably not going to be at a show unless it just happens, you know, falls in my lap. Uh, I mean, I. Yeah, I did see a lot of the the the. I don't know why I don't dig through the bins. Maybe because I just don't. But I've had, I've had stuff. I've had a red bar fall through my hands because I wasn't paying attention. Uh, you know, in one of the, in a five dollar bid, and it was a beater red bar, but it was a red bar. You know, it had just enough of the the sticker left on it to tell that it was a red bar, and the guy even knew he had a red bar in his in his uh in his bin, and and with it being a beater, it was still a couple of hundred dollar figure. Um. So I don't know why I, I kind of was doing that a little bit because you'd go and you'd go to one of the, the, you know, bins that had the figures in it. And then you'd see a sand person sitting on top and you're like, yeah, somebody already checked this out to make sure it wasn't a hollow tubes or um, and I don't want to be too obvious when I'm doing it, because I think people have caught on that people are doing that. And they're like, oh, you're looking for for uh, uh, variants or whatever. Uh, yeah, I mean, it is. Cause they had like toy Federation. They had some good stuff there. Then there's uh there's another guy there that sets up right next to toy Federation. So both of them had all pretty much all the high end stuff. Yeah. Um. There, because they, they, I, I think that's just what they, they're known for is the high end stuff. There was some good stuff. Um, but there again, I'm not looking for boxed star Wars. I'm not looking for men on card star Wars. Uh, one of the guys, when we went up to room 300, he had a Ewok that Mandy was kind of interested in, but it was really yellow and she was, the bubble was yellow and she's like, I don't want to, you know, I, he wanted a hundred bucks for it. And I'm like, let's throw a $50 bill at him, see if he takes it. And then she texted me later and goes, I really don't want a yellow bubble yeah. uh, because it was, it was like really yellow. It, it was one where you think in a year or two, you're not going to be able to see the figure. It's going to um, turn orange. Yeah. It was turning orange. And, um, I mean, I, there were, like I said, man, there was good stuff. It was good. We got to see Wayne do a panel, you know, support him, yep. uh, and his book, the, what, what's his, the, the toy wish book, toy wish. I keep forgetting what it's named because it just, it, yeah. Um, but it's the toy wish book. So he did a panel on that. Um, and I have to say when we saw, sorry, so yeah, no, do it. A tangent about Wayne's book. Um, so I, I was up there at PowerCon. I saw an early version of the book prior to what they've added to it. Uh huh. And it is twenty times better than the Kickstarter version of the book. Awesome. Because of the Kickstarter program, they were able to connect with like Tim Effler, who worked on the Indiana Jones line, and so they have an interview with him. They've got what's his name, Rich something or other, who sculpted the fangs of. Things of doom, things of fortress. Yeah, one of the things. Fortress from, of Fangs. Yeah, Fortress of Fangs from um, Dungeons, Dungeons and, Dragons, and Dragons, right? Yeah. And that was a dude that just, he said he just reached out to him one day. Because of the Kickstarter campaign, yep. And then uh, Billy Galaxy has a bunch of, he must be the Dungeons and Dragons guy. Mm -hmm. He's got prototypes, he's got variants. And so it, the the book just went from a uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, a 10 to a, a 50. Like, it's just... It's a required piece of, of of reading material, I guess, in any collector's collection. Right. I'm looking forward to get what I think he said first of the year they should have it is roughly yeah. what they're thinking. Um. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting my copy and then going through it. Um. Uh, yeah, but no, I'm 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 really excited over that book because that's like the first thing I've been able to watch start from a concept all the way to what it is now uh because i met wayne a couple of years ago at another show and he's just he's like hey i'm doing these prints and i'm thinking that you know i'm i'm, I'm kind of i'm gauging the interest and then it's just it's blown up uh to go into a book with a kid you're going into a multi-series book with kickstarter with a kickstarter and everything so mm -hmm. uh 
you know, it's fun watching that happen. And like I said, that's the first thing that, you know, you're able to get it on the ground floor or watch it from the ground floor uh, and become some, you know, watch somebody's dream take fold, you know, or take hold and, and, and become reality. So that it was, it's very cool to watch with Wayne. Yeah. And we at lunchtime had come up with a bunch of joke questions we were going to ask at the end of the panel. Yeah. Uh, but when we got to the room, uh, there was a lot of people in there. And I was so happy for him uh, mm -hmm. to see that kind of level of success that people were interested. He did a great panel. And I just felt like asking joke questions just wasn't appropriate. Like, I don't want to make fun of him because he's doing so well. And that's that made me so happy for him. Well, that and he came up and goes, don't embarrass me. <laughs> oh, he, he, he was messing with me, but he's like, dude. Don't. But yeah, no. And then uh, there were people say, asking like legitimate questions. I mean, and the yeah. granted, it was mostly David and Chance, but they had like legitimate questions and it it uh, advanced the conversation. And then it got to like an hour in and the guy from uh, Retro Toy Con's like, oh, we're done. Bye. We're done. Bye. It wasn't even like uh okay guys we got time for one more question and then uh we'll you can see wayne out at his booth it was just he stood up okay guys thanks for coming that's it right <laughs> oh, and okay. yeah we had i really wanted to be like dude your your cover is really glossy because uh rich was like dude talk about the cover uh because mm -hmm. <laughs> they fought over something about the cover and uh we just never, it, yeah, it just never, it never, we never got the chance because about the time where things are winding down, I you got to wait for the right moment to, to, you know, bust somebody's balls. And we great. Not, not only did it not feel right, we just never had the opportunity because things were moving so well for him and the conversation was moving and it just, yeah, I, to see the support and you, you, and it was really cool. Cause like, his father-in-law used to own a bunch of toy stores and there was a guy in the back was just like, Oh yeah, I, I know that guy. So they ended up connecting and, yeah. uh, you know, there again, it's just, a was a really cool time and just stepping back and letting stuff happen naturally, uh, was the way to go with that panel. Um, uh, so Wayne, if you're hearing that, you got, you lucked out, uh, <laughs> um, we, we planned a whole bunch of stuff for you, but no, the, that was, you did great. I mean, he did a great job with the panel. I know he was nervous about it being his first panel that he's headed, uh, by himself. And I know dude, like, the first few minutes of a panel leading up to it where you're like, oh, no, I'm I'm doing it all by myself. It It's nerve wracking. It's a lot easier to be up there with a couple of friends or be up there with a bass guitar in your hand. And um, but when you've got to lead something, it's nerve wracking. Um, after that panel. So part of the reason why I know there's a lot of like junk bins and just not that good stuff at the shows, because we I was searching for Power of the Force uh, Max Rebo band. Uh -huh. Rich is Rich is took his uh I think I've talked about this. He took his Jabba's Palace and he's gutted it. He's added lights. He's gonna paint it. He's gonna make it look like a legitimate diorama that's gonna be envious. And but part of it he make wanted it to look like it should have been a Haslab. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna uh put Jabba's uh, band in there. And so we were looking for that. And so we're digging through things and and at one point he walks over to me, he goes, dude. I just moved a Darth Vader to the front of that display over there. Tell me if that's a double telescope. Oh, so I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, just right over there. So I walk over and I pick up. It's in a baggie. Uh -huh. And I'm like looking at it. And the 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 saber looks really, really weird. It doesn't look worn down. It's got sharp edges. And I can't tell if it moves or not. If it was in a bag, yeah, I'd have just opened that thing up. Well, he came over and he's like, just open it up. I'm like, okay. So he takes it. He opens it up. And he takes the saber and his fingers start moving and all the adrenaline in my body releases because this Vader was listed for $25. Oh, my all God. Of the, all of the adrenaline in my body started pumping. And he said his started too, but then he quickly realized that it was just his finger sliding against <laughs> the, the second part of the saber. It was really, really clean. It looked like a double telescoping. It wasn't. But for a moment there... Uh, I felt like I could have lifted See, a car. I had so much adrenaline. That's the kind of crap I miss because I don't dig through stuff. Yeah. Well, to be clear, what it, it wasn't a DT, but you had that moment of going, "Oh my god, but I just found it." He, he well, he, yeah, he had that moment of, "Oh my god, I just found a twenty thousand dollar figure for twenty five bucks." Because Hell, even if if it was a clean Vader, it was worth it was worth triple what twenty five dollars. Because I think for like a half a half a second. 
mm-hmm. half of a half of a half of a second when his fingers started moving mm-hmm. it took a second for his brain to catch up to realize that it was just his fingers moving across the saber and not the saber moving uh because we really really wanted that <laughs> wow that <laughs> was pretty awesome and it was a fun moment and afterwards, we were, I was just, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I needed snap. a nap. <laughs> wow. Wow. That would have been a Wow. It would have been awesome. It, yeah. It's not a thing. It, it wasn't a thing, just to be clear. You're right. Well, you see, the thing is, is that's the kind of show you're probably going to catch somebody making a mistake like that. You're not going to catch it. You might catch it at Toilana, but it's like celebration or some you get some of these bigger shows that people know what they're doing. You're not going to do it. Um, I mean, that's exactly how I got that red bar. Yeah. Someone didn't know or they didn't pay attention. But I guess I need to look at every single saber that I come across. I was looking for the uh, hollow tubes um, sand person. Right. You see, I don't even think of looking at for a DT stuff because I would figure that the people would be smart enough to know they've got a DT uh whatever be you know. Mm-hmm. Even the DT Luke's are two thousand dollar figure. You know, you'd figure that they know, oh, I've got a DT Luke, but uh I just I don't know. I just I don't think my mind doesn't work that way. And I've been trying to retrain it mm-hmm. over the past several years to start looking for stuff, and I've gotten better for, at looking for stuff like that, but Damn it, now you just added something else I need to look for. Yeah. That that would have been I think the whole car would have been on Cloud Nine riding home if that would have been a DT debater. Yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> that would have been I'm buying it. And it would have been like at the football games when the guy catches the football and he runs out the stadium. That would have been that kind of moment where we would have just been like, all right, we're done. We're leaving. We we're we're getting out of here. GTFO, we're done. Yeah. It'd have been it that kind good- of moment. It was a good moment. <laughs> it was fun. Wow. Anything else from the show? Um Well, we we let's talk about the pricing real quick because I think that'll okay. lead into what I want cuz I want to talk about the retro line. Um but a couple of other things I want to talk about when we wrap up the show and the retro okay. talk. Yeah, let's 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 so you when I ran into Jordan and Richard, they thought the pricing was about right. Or they thought people were willing and dealing. And that was mainly because he had saw one of the G.I. Joe helicopters Richard had. And the guy had like 150 on it. And it was complete with the box. And it had Wild Bill. It was, you know, it had everything with it. And as he's thinking about it, somebody walks up behind him and makes a deal on it for 100. So I think they their minds were a little skewed because of that deal. Uh, but you thought the pricing was a little high uh, throughout the show. Um, I, think- I don't. I didn't really have a thought on pricing because I didn't really get a chance to really the stuff I was looking at didn't you know what I mean? It was like the cosmic legions. Okay. They're $50 and they're $50 across the board because nobody's going to really mess with that price. Yeah. I thought uh, pricing is still high. I think it's taking some time for vendors to realize that their prices are too high. Uh I I think it's a tough pill to swallow. I can't blame them for it. I mean, you want to get your top dollar, but your $150 item might only be worth 75. Right. We were talking Voltron. I don't know anything about Voltron, but for the longest time, this item was $50. And now it's suddenly $150, but it's sitting there at $150. Right. So was it a complete Voltron? It was in the, no, it was in Voltron. It was a Voltron item. Okay. Um, it was a, like one of the ancillary pieces, but it was in the box. It was open. It was $150. And I was told that, couple of years ago it was fifty dollars so it's gotcha. like I, yeah because i the only thing i can like let's say voltron to use that as an example i know like a complete voltron in the box open i mean i was seeing those for like 300 bucks for a clean one mm-hmm. and you know a a big voltron complete is you know about 150 dollars maybe yeah. and then to, like uh, toy federation has its own youtube channel and it I feel like there's a chip on the shoulder when I watch it. And it just could be just my perception is my opinion. But a lot of that stuff, a lot of those videos that I've watched, and maybe I'm watching the wrong videos, seems to be, uh, he paid too much for this. He's asking for too much for this. And it was almost like a, a shop's version of like, how dare you ask for that kind of money? Uh-huh. How dare you expect that kind of money? Let me reset your expectations. And it's like, maybe maybe people are asking too much is because you're charging too much. Right. 
Yeah, I I don't like I said I, I the stuff I saw I saw like some maybe like boxed vehicles for and I don't know I didn't I'm assuming they're open for the pricing but they were you know the hundred hundred and fifty dollar range. Um, but there again, it's not something I'm looking for, so I don't know the price. Uh, just think I was thinking a minute ago they had like some uh you know a graded gambit first first appearance of gambit they had a guy asking three fifty for it. Um, and I thought that was ridiculous because I paid, I think 200 for mine last December. Now I don't know what the grade, I don't, I don't understand the comic book grading. I think it was like a 9.8, which is a high grade, um, mm -hmm. from my understanding. And in comic books, you can get a 9.5 versus a 9.8. And that's a big, that's a big gap. Um, so, and, and, and then I'm, 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 I'm get, all right. So, cause my wife's in the, in the, Ewoks. So there was a set of Ewok Ewoks roller skates. Barely, they were used. Maybe, maybe a week or two were you know ridden a couple of times, and they got put up with the box, and they had the box with them. Guy was wanting one hundred and fifty dollars for them, and I we we were both. I'm like, and she she messaged a couple of her friends that are Ewok collectors, and they were like, that's like a maybe seventy five dollar piece on a good day, not one hundred and fifty. And I told her, I said, that to me sounds, because I think you can get a, a one without the box for maybe 50, you know, 25 to $50 yeah. there again, depending on the condition. And they were in decent condition. There was some staining on them. Uh, the wheels weren't worn out. Uh, you, you could tell, like I said, you could tell they'd been ridden, but it, it, you know, the, whoever had them didn't ride them much. And then they had some walklings and the guy was wanting like $250 each for these walklings that at the most bring a hundred dollars and that's the rare ones. I mean, now granted they all had the tags and I probably, you know, with the tag, you're probably looking at 75 to a hundred dollars. I would even say 75 would be a lot for one with the tag for the standard walkling. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a couple of the older ones that I know without a tag or anything are a hundred dollars just cause they're rare. Uh, but that was one booth. Uh, and that dude, um, he seemed to have very high pricing. He also had one of the fry guys. You remember McDonald's, the fry guy, yeah. the rideable. He wanted four hundred bucks for it, and yep. I, I thought McDonald's Playland fry yeah, guys, the Playland fry guys, where we, you know, you'd go to McDonald's and you'd spend two hours because they had a really awesome Playland back in the and day. And it needed restoration work. It was not in good condition. Yeah, and needed new wanting, paint. Yeah, he was wanting like four hundred bucks for it, and then I was like, ah. He also had a. Uh, I don't know if you saw this. It was in like a maybe a three by four kind of frame. It was a sketch of the I landing gear. Yeah, because yeah. I saw you you guys were looking at it, and then I went back and just what were they looking at? And it looked really cool. It it's it's a Kenner piece. It's like a schematic drawing of the landing gear for the snow speeder. Yeah, it, he wanted one hundred fifty bucks. It came with a a printout. It looked like a photocopy almost. It was some uh, sort of certificate of authenticity. Certificate from Prop Store. So it could have been even from the movie. I don't know. I didn't look that close. I just saw that it was Star Wars a sketch. He won 150 bucks for it. So, but I mean, I didn't buy that. But it well, was still I, a cool thing to see. Right. I I figured it wasn't worth it when you, I, for 150 dollars. I probably would have tried making a deal on it just because it's cool having stuff like that 2D stuff. But. When I saw you guys walk away from it, I thought it wasn't worth pursuing. So I just, you know, I, I looked just, at it. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're good. Um, you know, I just, I was like, oh, it's not worth it. Uh, you know, it wasn't worth pursuing further because I think you might have come up to me and you know what I mean. It, there would have been more conversation about it. I was um, just curious how much he was asking for. I, yeah. It's not something I was in the market for. I, I spent a lot of money on Cantina Aliens for a cantina well, I, I don't have. I'm sure it would have been a if it would have been a micro machines thing. You I would have been, been all like, over it. Right. It would have been mine. Yeah. I would have sold all the cantina aliens. <laughs> I trade you this bag full of cantina room aliens. Yeah. Oh, we would have stayed late for room sales? To sell these aliens so I can get the <laughs> micro machine 2D piece. Yes. <laughs> See, I, I'm curious, uh, because Mandy was talking about staying for room sales, and I said if we were gonna do that, we would need to plan better because I wasn't gonna stay till eight, nine o'clock at night. Yeah. and then do a three-hour drive home uh so maybe next year we'll do room sales i didn't look the the pictures looked kind of cool uh but then there again i don't see stuff from like the big star wars room sales that i can afford or stuff that i'm looking for so would i find it there i you just you, never know 
you never know. You never know. Like I said, I, and that's my rule for toys. It takes one bit. It takes one item to make your show. Um. So uh, yeah, I, I, I like I said, I, I thought that symbiotic Spider Man was an okay price, but everybody I talked to, they were kind of like, oh uh, yeah, maybe. Because I remember seeing it for like three hundred bucks in Cincinnati, but maybe they were better condition. Uh, and I even told the guy, I said, dude, I got a hundred dollars cash on me right now. I need to go see my wife, see if I can find some more money. And he didn't bite on it. So that's sort of my, if I, um, uh, you know, if I see an item, I'm like, ah, oh, this is what I got on me. And I see if they bite on it. And the guy, they didn't even want to make a deal. They weren't even trying to, oh, I'll do 120. I'll do, oh yeah, sure. If you got a hundred dollars cash on you, I'll, I'll take it. Mm -hmm. And, um, I did see a lot of items. Uh, cause normally you'll see an item that catches your eye and then it disappears. There was a lot of items that I saw sitting on the shelf that was, you know, you catch your eye and be like, pay attention to that. And they were still sitting there. I think the only item that I saw disappear was some of those walklings. And I really hope they get the guy gave the guy a better deal than two fifty each on them. We saw Blake and Blake picked one up, picked up one of the walk. I wonder if he worked a good deal on it. I don't know. He said that he picked up, uh, Oh, maybe I shouldn't say anything. Never mind. I don't want to give away someone's collection. Oh, he told me he had a he had a piece, and this would uh, accompany that piece. Okay, <laughs> that walkling. But I'll just leave it there. Well, there's also the the opportunity to where you're like, sometimes you'll overpay for something because it it, like you said, it, you're not going to find it again. Are you working? Yeah. You know, so maybe that was his opera. Maybe he was like, you know, I, I I need to go ahead and do it. But that'll be a conversation for off air. Yeah. So what's uh what's the retro discussion that you wanted to have? So with the retro stuff that's been coming out, you know, first they did a first 12. You know, the, the basically the first yep. run of them were first 12s. Yep. Or 12 backs. Then they did another run of like Return of the Jedi, not Return Empire, Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, they did And now they've kind of done Return of the Jedi with a yak face. Um, I thought this would happen because what they've been doing that for four years, three, four years. Mm -hmm. It was, yeah, it started during COVID, I think. Or right before. No, I remember. Um, was it 2019? I just no. remember hanging out at Narayan's when they released it. So I don't know if it was a summer social or if it was one of those where, you know, somebody had come into town and a bunch of people had, we were having a party. Uh, I, I want to say it was a summer social, but don't quote me on that. So I'm, I'm going to say summer of 19. Uh, when these things were coming out. And I remember quoted. making a comment, huh? Quoted. Quoted. He said, don't quote you on that. I just quoted you. <laughs> quoted. <laughs> so um, I just remember making a comment that maybe, and this was in 19 when 12, when prices were still fairly decent uh, yeah. compared to where they are now. And I remember making a comment, well, maybe this will correct the market and getting some when people staring through me like what the hell are you talking about this we don't need a market correction uh and then covid and then prices went through the roof uh so now instead of paying I, and don't you know there again i'm pulling prices out my butt so you're, quoted. you know huh quoted quoted uh so let's say you're spending 500 bucks on a 12 back now they're 13 or 1500 dollars for the same figure um after covid so um so instead of spending fifteen hundred dollars on a figure i can go buy a retro line figure now you're probably going to pay 25 dollars for the first run of retro line figures on a card maybe more i don't know um because i think the boba fett's like a, isn't the boba the boba fett's high retro figure because he's boba fett yeah um, i think he's in the hundred dollar range or let, let's use a hundred dollars as a as a as an example for the retro line Really, you retro spend... boba's that price? I I don't. I think the rocket firing one is. Oh, but that not... one for TVC, yeah. Well, yeah, because they re because it's a retro mold, but they did rocket firing one. Uh, or let's say fifty dollars. Uh, tw are you gonna? Huh? He's he's twenty bucks. Really? Is that the retro cheap? version. The... Oh, the retro. The okay. Not the rocket firing. The retro one that they came out with Empire Strikes Back. Yes, the recent oh, one. I want to make sure my numbers are kind of at least half my numbers right. The TV TVC version, someone's asking two hundred dollars for. Wow. With the ro rocket firing. I remember 
one of the first toy Lanas or something or the long story short, there was a graded one at one of the at local Atlanta toy shows. The guy was asking a hundred, hundred fifty dollars for on one of the Facebook pages. Somebody was asking 20 bucks for it. So I messaged the guy. I'm like, Hey, you still got that rocket firing fet. And I paid like 20 bucks for it. Cause I knew prices were going to go up. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so our back to my, my theory, you're going to pay $1,500 for a vintage one, or you can pay $20 for one that looks very similar. What are you going to do? You know, if you don't care, if you just want something that looks cool, you're going to pay $20 for it. Yeah. So, huh? You lose street uh, street cred because everyone's going to be like, uh, the peer pressure is going to be, well, that's not real. That's a new one. But take that out of the equation. Does it matter? Right. Take that the, take that out of the equation like oh you just have a retro line because that's not that's not the culture I want to support. You know, yeah. picking on somebody because they don't have the right collection. They don't have the right collectible in their collection. Um if you don't care is there after 4 years is there a market adjustment finally happening because you can go buy the retro line for 20 bucks versus a $1500 vintage figure yeah so i mean is that finally correcting the market i don't have the answer i i think i i just saw a yak face for seven hundred dollars it was vintage i i don't want to spend seven hundred dollars on a vintage yak face that just seems way too much money for an action figure right um but i yeah i'll spend eighty dollars to get that six pack and get a yak face and and so it's, he's not going to go in my vintage case, but I'm happy that I have a yak face now. Right. I mean, because I could drop, I mean, the yak face, $700 for a yak face, I think is ridiculous. That's also a toy show price, though. So. Well, still, even you're looking at even $500 for a yak face, an open yak face is ridiculous. I've seen them, um, you know, for six, yeah, for, for the $600 range for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, you're right. If people don't care and they just want a yak face, they're going to go spend the 80 bucks at Disney. And then they can even, they can even, it's even to the point where they could sell the other figures and they get a, basically get a yak face for free if they do it right. Yeah. I'm sure blue snaggletooth, if they continue this line, I don't know how successful it is. We were also talking in the car that it seems like the book of Boba Fett wave has been completely skipped. Yeah, because that was supposed to come out in the spring, and Ahsoka is out right now. So it's like, what happened to the wave that came before this one? Has anybody checked their ollies? It's not there yet. <laughs> I was getting crap because I pre-order all this stuff, but well, you see, that's another thing I think that's driving the, the clearance mad. culture. The clearance and, and um, yeah, it's the clearance culture. It's. Uh, because, yeah, if you wait six months to a year, the stuff will be at Ollie's. The challenge with Ollie's is that you have to be the first there. Otherwise, someone's going to come and buy all of them and then jack the prices up. So it's like, do I get it now for $14 or do I get it later for $16 or $17? It's like it's there's no guarantee that the you're going to get the right quality, the right condition, uh, the right price. It's just there's this whole formula out there that you got to figure out because i just don't know when's the right time oh they're gonna give me crap for this i don't know it's just whatever right well i've also seen on another forum on one of the facebook groups somebody was asking how does the re the repro retro weapons compare to the vintage weapons because he's like why am i gonna spend 30 40 dollars on a weapon when i can go to ollie's and pay eight yeah and then i don't care where and i've also heard the same thing with retro I mean, with repro weapons, you know, if I'm if I'm displaying this stuff loose, why am I going to put a hundred and fifty dollar blaster in a loose figure, and then take yeah, the why, chance of it losing? Why do I want to? Why do I want to spend a hundred and fifty dollars in a blaster for a seventy dollar figure? It doesn't make any sense. Right. Well, it, it also you got more plastic in the figure than you do in the blaster. Right. Well, the V like the V is it a V five blaster that goes with the Taiwan Fet? That's $150, which is crazy to me, but I have one. And as soon as I put the two together, it went to AFA because I'm like, 
I don't want to take the chance of of losing this blaster. Hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it just it's it's a weird time right now, and and I think I think Hasbro's kind of it. You're getting back into the same you know thing we've talked about a dozen times before about uh you know when you look at a Cosmic Legion, you're paying fifty bucks, and even my wife, I showed my wife, I'm like, look at this Cosmic Legion figure that I got, you know, and she's just like, oh my god. You know, it, she came with three weapons, two sets of hands, two heads. The cloth goods had the soft goods had uh, wires in it so you could pose it. You know, it's like why? And even you know, it's like why can't you know Hasbro look at this stuff? I'm sure Hasbro sees it, but it's like guys, we're willing to pay money for a good figure. Come on, Shannon just sent me on. Some sort of Lego Millennium, Millennium Falcon holiday diorama. Um, so it's on. It's just like a little section of the Falcon with Chewie, Ray, and Finn. Uh-huh. And on the table is a turkey. My wife was like, "Is that a uh, porg?" Probably is. <laughs> Probably, but anyway, sorry. Yeah, no, I've seen that. That's a cool set. I I would be interested in in finding that set. Um, uh, but I don't know what it runs because uh, I yeah. do like the I do like the dioramas. They do a. a because I've got the uh, Lars Homestead diorama that it's pretty cool. The retirement age is what, 62, 65? Yeah. If you were 10 years old when uh, Star Wars came out, you're now 54, 55 ish. Yeah. You're 10 years away from retirement. So you're going to start offloading these things, and people are going to expect top dollar. They're going to expect the 2020 prices. Um, but Star Wars is soft right now, uh, whether that's because people are just tired of collecting this stuff. There's too much of it. Uh, they don't. It doesn't resonate with the, the films or the TV shows don't resonate with everyone. So it's it, the star is diminished a little bit and people don't look at it through rose colored glasses. They see flaws. They see things that they don't like. And all that contributes to a deflation in the value of Star Wars in general which does tie into the action figures. Those will deflate in price too. And not just, not just in price, but the way it resonates with people, the love of things like I used to love it, but now I don't love it as much that right. I'm not saying that's me. I'm just right. saying no, I got you. in general, people will think that they'll feel that. So all that stuff is coming down. It's we're in a weird phase right now where people are expecting high prices. People are going to start offloading things. So, Things that were tied up in collections might suddenly go to auction, might suddenly go to, you know, the the one 12 back might soon become the one 12 back Luke that might is available now might soon become 13 uh, 12 back Luke's available in a couple of years because people will start offloading it, which will mean I, I don't need to spend $2,000 on this one because there's 12 other ones available right now. Right. And in supply and demand, like the price is going to start coming down. Um, I think the time to get out was a couple of years ago. I don't I just don't see prices skyrocketing anytime soon. I don't know what the future is going to bring for Star Wars. It's it's definitely definitely a weird time and it's a scary time. And, uh, you know, like you said in the past, you don't know what's going on. So, yeah, we'll see. There's, there's a lot in flux. There's a lot of. There's just too much of the formula. Like there's modern collecting, there's vintage collecting, there's age that's a factor. There's the lack of resonation between properties and people. And it's just like there's so much going on. And then you've got that hard camp of like, no, it's worth twelve thousand dollars and you're gonna pay twelve thousand dollars. And it's like, well, maybe it's not worth twelve thousand dollars. But right. Were you gonna discuss micro galaxy squadron real quick? Because it just freaking hit me. Those things are showing up at Ross for six bucks right now. No, I was going to talk about it, but yeah, yeah. That's another thing that throws a flux into everything, into collecting. Yeah, that's another weird thing. They've already announced Series Five, but there's no word about Series Five, and a lot of Series One. I saw the Bad Batch was available at Ross for twelve bucks. The the Marauder. Marauder. Um, well, I also know. I mean, going to to another toy line like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. There was a lot of griping and moaning where like something with that was very valuable on the fur on the the normal retail market is now hitting the discount market, like a figure that was like hard to get that was like 
50, 60 bucks on the retail market is now hitting uh, the secondary mark, not the secondary market, I'm sorry, the discount market, the Ross and the Ollie's and stuff like that for eight, nine dollars. So it's That's really true. hurting that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles brand. It's just part of the game, unfortunately. Yeah, the scalpers will grab the things before you and they'll try to flip it. And uh, when you short pack something, it's only one per case. It's going to create demand and people are going to want it more. Um, And if people aren't buying through, because if, if you've got a case of 12 figures and one of them's collectible, but the other 11 are sitting on the store shelves, it's going to kill the brand. And they're not going to put out other cases to bring that one figure available to others. And so all that stuff just gets dumped into Ollie's. And so the situation that was six months ago is not the current situation because now people can get it. And it just, I feel for the people that spent the more money on that one figure six months ago, mm -hmm. but it's, it's just part of that weird game that we play. Do I buy it now or do I wait till later in clearance? And there's a good chance you might not be able to get it on clearance. The, the, the rule, my rule of thumb is how bad do I want it? If I want it bad enough, I find it. Yeah. And buy it when it first comes out. Yeah. Life Day was this week. And uh, I just watched. I only watched. So there was that charity for Toys for Tots viewing uh, in the collecting community. Um, Sean Moynihan arranges this thing where on Vimeo you can uh, donate $25 to Toys for Tots. And you'll get a link and you can watch the Life Day special. I was exhausted last night, so I didn't watch most of it or the only thing I watched was B. Arthur's song section. And that's really the only part that I care because it's all the cantina stuff and it's, it's fun, but it was weird. We, there was a talk afterwards, the, after the viewing. And it, it is weird that for so long, Lucasfilm has been so quiet. It has shunned the, the holiday special. Nobody talked about it. And now the official star Wars Facebook page was posting it's life day celebrate moments <laughs> from the holiday special it's like what that's a 180 right disney has definitely felt like this is a moment we can uh uh profit on capitalize on and they've started releasing merchandise we now have a tvc life day figure there's a snuggie there's ornaments there's a spork that was released at disneyland it's just, it's weird to suddenly be in this world where, wait, the holiday special is okay? Right. Well, shoot, don't they have the, you can watch the Boba Fett section of the holiday special on Disney Plus, right? Yeah, you can watch that. That was also part of the Blu-ray, but that was the only section that you could watch <laughs> as part of the Blu-ray. I'm Boba Fett. I'm Boba Fett. I don't, I don't know the show. <laughs> I can't <laughs> quote anymore. You're right. I don't know it that well, but right, it was bad. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about: November twentieth, nineteen ninety-eight, which is the day before this episode is released, but the day after we record, <laughs> it's Monday. <laughs> uh, Twenty-five years ago, the episode one, a new hope, uh, a new hope. Gosh, the Phantom <laughs> Menace. I'm getting tired. The Phantom Menace trailer dropped in. You had to be in the siege, the Water Boy, or meet Joe Black. I remember going to see Meet Joe Black, which is a horrible movie. <laughs> I didn't know that the trailer played at the start, at the end of them, and at the end of the movie. Wow. So I started, I watched, saw the trailer, and then I was like, I spent the money. I'm not going to walk out of Meet Joe Black. So I sat through the entire movie, and it didn't realize until like years later that I could have stayed after the credits and watched the trailer again. I just walked out. I suffered oh, through that whole movie. I deserved to watch the movie, the did. trailer again. I remember one. No, this was when um, the last Jedi was it. Last Jedi episode seven came out. I remember jumping from into the theaters and I went, "Okay, it's playing before this movie." Oh. And like physically, I paid for a movie, but then I jump into another movie so I could watch the trailer again on the big screen. But you don't. You didn't see the trailer on uh, uh, the episode one trailer and the screen i didn't the go screen. i did whatever one time one was playing in front of like monsters inc and we went watch monsters inc so i can watch one of the trailers but it wasn't the first one it wasn't no, episode it wasn't one the first one I, uh, and then i but, remember downloading it and it's that small screen on the computer and quick time you'd have to wait for it to download and then you're the 
And that was the first shot of seeing Darth Maul in action, who looked cool. And that was the first shot of seeing Anakin and Obi-Wan meet for the first time. Because mm-hmm. Qui-Gon Jinn, Anakin Kenobi, meet Anakin, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, meet Anakin Skywalker. Right. And Please you had, meet you. you saw the first, the, the light, the du- dual edge lightsaber for the first time. And you're just like, what the hell is that? But I will say, uh, in my head, I developed my own plot of expectation for episode one. So I did appreciate that it was not what I thought it was. Mm-hmm. But I thought, because they started talking about Anakin being the chosen one. Yeah. I thought the movie was going to be about a race to find the chosen one. Oh. I thought that Darth Maul was hunting Anakin mm-hmm. to try to find him, to bring him to the dark side. And I thought Obi-Wan Kenobi and Qui-Gon was chasing Anakin to bring him to the light side. And like whoever could get him first was going to be the one that can claim him. And that's that obviously like not su- what the movie's about. You're right. That sounds like such a better movie than what we got. <laughs> Is she wanna... an angel? You look like an angel. <laughs> I don't want to dump on episode one. I, <laughs> Like I've said before, I have a lot of fond memories. It's just crazy that the, the fond memory started 25 years ago. Uh, I remember like taking time off of work so I can go see it. And uh, I saw it three cool. times that first day. <laughs> wow. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mind it. I like the pod race scene. I like the uh, end Jedi fight. Cause I mean, that was, if you compare that, the end Jedi fight with Darth Maul compared to the original trilogy, it was phenomenal. Right. Especially when Obi-Wan and Darth Maul go at it finally. Well, that's one of the one things we got good with all the new Star Wars stuff is the lightsaber fights are insane today. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, no, I remember um, when I saw the first time I saw it, it was like a Saturday matinee, like first thing in the morning. And there was uh, one of the local comic book stores had rented the comp had rented it out the preview before that. So mm-hmm. they were running late that pre that showing was running late. And I just remember the guy, you know, like they 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 were running out and they're like, oh, we're going to give you guys free popcorn and Coke because this one's running late. And I still give the guy crap about it. And he was like, yeah, that yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I saw it at 1130. I didn't go to the midnight show. Maybe it was like 1030. I saw it. And that was weird at the time to see a 1030 in the morning show. Right. Um, And so I saw it then. And then I went home and then I saw like a two o'clock show with friends some friends of mine that was the first time they saw it and quite literally i walked out of the theater and got back in line because my dad was waiting so i went and saw him (laughs) immediately after like it was the same theater they were cleaning up so i got back in line with him they finished cleaning the theater and i got back into the same theater to watch episode one again it's awesome it kind of is i have a lot of fond memories of episode one and finding action figures with my friends and yeah, going to Toys R Us, and the whole line was the whole aisle was just filled with toys. It was all up front, and then you'd go back into the action figure section, and it was a full aisle of just episode one stuff. Right. Well, I remember going to Walmart at like midnight with my kids in tow, and everybody was like, "We, why are you here?" And like to buy Star Wars stuff, and I was like the only one there. Um, and then I remember selling it all. 10 years later for like $150 and taking the money and running. Yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah. It, it, yeah, it, it's like for all the crap we give those movies, it re- did regenerate star Wars, which I think it needed. And, um, I don't know. I think the prequel trail, not the prequel, the sequel trilogy had that opportunity. And I, I just don't know if Disney did it wrong or we did it wrong as fans. I, I don't know where, who who to blame for that? Uh, it could just be a, a collection of all of it, right? I think it, it falls on everybody. Um, Pedro Pascal is rumored to play Mister Fantastic in the Fantastic Four movie. Yeah, uh, he wants to be a movie star, so there's a good chance he's already the... a movie star, though, isn't he? Um, I don't know if he's seen as a movie movie star. He's no. been in movies, but I think like. He wants to be a movie star. And so between The Last of Us, season two, and uh, Fantastic Four, if that's true, you know, we're not going to see him in Mando season four. He'll still be the voice. I mean, that's just an afternoon of dialogue. Well, you know what that leaves the door open for? What? Bo-Katan to take over Mandalorian. And then I think he'll be in the movie. 
uh, Filoni's movie. Because uh, if he does want to be a movie star, you want to be on the big screen, you're definitely going to be in the movie. All right. Hey, man, I got a movie. You want to come do it? Yeah. So I would assume the next time we see the Mandalorian's face will be in Filoni's movie. Yeah. I, I just, I hope we don't, I hope that's not the next time we see Thrawn. Because that's such a good character and he did such a good job with it. Yeah. We um, also have a new panel announcement, which we've been kind of holding back and not talking about um, on this, this show. I think we're both kind of excited about this. Uh, every month leading up to Rogue Fun, we unveil a new panel for the event. And this month, we were excited to announce Animating Boba Fett and Beyond, a conversation with John Celestri. John Celestri is a talented illustrator who's worked in the animation industry for decades. Some of the projects he, he lent his talents to include He-Man, She-Ra, Care Bears, and X-Men Evolution. In the late 1970s, he animated Boba Fett for the character's debut in Hollywood, uh, Hollywood Star Wars Holiday Special. And so uh, those that attend this panel will learn what it was like to work on the Holiday Special and how he designed one of our favorite bounty hunters. Um, also, uh, this panel will be moderated by John Waterhouse. Uh, he is a Georgia-based Star Wars collector and is a creative writer. He's written for the Star Wars Adventure uh, comic book. He's written a story for that. So he's an author, a journalist, radio host, MC pop culture aficionado, and f and former host of the Smugglers Galaxy podcast. Is that accurate? John, yes, he was the uh, he's he's the reason why we have this podcast because he reached out and was like, "Hey, does anybody want to do a podcast?" And I was like, "I've been wanting to do a podcast." So that's he was sort of the uh, driving force behind this. But uh, yeah, he's interviewed uh, several people in the media before. So he's a very talented moderator and he will uh, make this panel really shine. I have no doubt about that. So uh, that panel will only be seen at Rogue Fun May 2024. Anything else? I think that's it. It was a good episode. It was. Thank you for listening to the Smuggler's Galaxy podcast. If you could, please leave a like and a five-star review of the show anywhere you listen to podcasts. It really helps us out and points people to our show. Follow us on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Send us an email or message us. We love feedback. We'd love to make you part of our show. Our email address is smugglersgalaxy at gmail.com. Thank you to Alfonso Riviera for the Smuggler's Galaxy logo. Thank you to Levi Waterhouse, John Sun, for the music. People, collect for the love of it. Hashtag vote with your wallet. Sabine will be on next week. Pass on what you've learned. Be a positive force in the collective community. This is the way. This is the way.